Today's event is a celebration of diversity and inclusion in sport. This is the world's first ever rainbow round for Aussie rules football, driven largely by two long-standing arch rivals, the Yarra Valley Mountain District Football League's Yarra Glen Football Club and the Yarra Junction Football Club. On behalf of the Yarra Glen Football Club, I would like to welcome Cindy McLeish, MP, State Member for Seymour, and Councillor Fiona McAllister, Mayor of the Yarra Rangers Council. I'd also like to acknowledge the Australian Football League present here today and represented by the General Manager of Football Operations, Mark Evans, as well as the General Manager of Commercial Operations, Darren Birch, together with his partner, Dr Pippa Grange, Director of Bluestone Edge. As members of the LGBTI community know all too well, it was once impossible to get the AFL to come to the table. Today, they are providing the table and the lunch and the drinks, and we are most grateful. <laughs> I'd also like to acknowledge some special guests, uh, David Ball and Helen Powell, Jason Ball's loving parents. Brock McLean, Carlton Football Club midfielder. Nigel Williams, Chief Risk Officer of the ANZ. Kate Jenkins, Commissioner of the Victorian Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commission. Uh, Gerald Rector, Chief Executive Officer of Health Victoria, Vic Health, sorry. Uh, Belle Brockoff, Australian Winter Olympian at the recent 2014 Sochi Games. Uh, Leo Gronenwegen, President of the Yarra Valley Mountain District Football League. Vincent Erickson, President of the Yarra Glen Football and Netball Club. Tony Ulrich, President of the Yarra Junction Football and Netball Club. Matt Rannick, President of Pride March, and Jill Stark, Senior Journalist with Fairfax The Age newspaper. Today we are here to celebrate and launch the 2014 Pride Cup, an idea which was firstly developed between the coaches of Yarra Glen and Yarra Junction football clubs. You know, it's only 18 months ago that on the 9th of September 2012, a 24-year-old football player decided to tell the world that he was homosexual. In doing so, Jason Ball was the first openly gay man known to currently play our national game, Aussie Rules. His courageous stance shattered over 135 years of complicit silence and discrimination perpetuated both on and off the sporting field in a football code defined by the macho image. With the support of his teammates here at Yarra Glen Football and Netball Club, Jason Ball's story aired on every television news bulletin that Sunday night and made headlines around the world. Over the weeks that followed, Jason gathered 29,000 signatures to his online petition, insisting that the AFL acknowledge the entrenched homophobia that festered within its ranks and at all levels. By highlighting homophobia in sport, Jason shone a light on the isolation felt by thousands of LGBTI people every day and the tremendous mental and physical health impact that such discrimination has on the lives of these people. Jason successfully lobbied the AFL to broadcast anti-homophobia TV commercials during two preliminary final games held at ANZ Stadium and the MCG. This marked the first active step taken by the AFL towards creating cultural change against homophobia. In December of 2012, Australia's National Depression and Anxiety Initiative, Beyond Blue, recognised Jason's advocacy for inclusion and named him an ambassador for their cause. For generations, people who made a stand against homophobia were labelled fags. Jason managed to transform this perception by enrolling some of the AFL's biggest stars in an online social media campaign for International Day Against Homophobia in 2013. Now, Taking a stand against homophobia makes you a good bloke. In just 12 months, Jason, uh, 18 months, Jason Ball has managed to achieve what decades of political and community, community lobbying could not. Jason remains focused on seeing change embraced. In recognition of his resolve, Dean DeMunk, coach of Yarra Glen Football Club, approached Jason about the concept of a Pride Cup. And with further support from the AFL, the Arrow Rangers Council and the Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commission, we are gathered here today for this momentous occasion. The General Manager of Football Operations for the AFL, Mr Mark Evans. 
When you play football with someone, a teammate, all you want is that person contributes as much as they can towards the team's success and you can have some fun and you can really try hard to achieve whatever it is that you want to do with that team. That's what inclusion and diversity is about. People can come from all parts of the globe, have all religions, all skin types, all forms of sexuality, but when you come together in a community, none of those things genuinely matter when you judge the value of a person. Jason Ball has worked with the AFL, uh, with our education team, and has helped us produce uh, a video clip that goes for about four minutes. We've had three or four of these uh, this year. We had uh, Simon Hogan and his story was about depression. We had Peter Searle and her story was about gender bias. We had Joel Wilkinson and his story was about racial vilification. And we had Jason's story. With these four bits of vision, our education team has gone into every club, every playing group, and has shown these stories to the first to third year players within the AFL. So they play the four minute vision and stop and discuss it. And it was an open ended discussion, it wasn't led by us, we weren't asking questions. The first question is what did you think about that, that, uh, that story? And then it would get into a bit more deeper discussion. What do you think the AFL's position should be about that story? And I'd have to say, one of the proudest things that we've done, this is one of the best education pieces that we've done, first to third year players, 18, 19, 20 year old players. These are the things that they've said. Yeah, you know what? If it was one of my teammates that was gay and had then come out and told us he was gay, that's probably going to go down OK for us. It's not going to be that much of an issue for us. Internally, we think we can cope with that. We actually don't really mind as long as we're contributing towards our team's success. And he's trying his hardest to make sure that he improves and the team improves. We think we're OK with that. There's no problem. They did so, say, yeah, we also recognise the difficulties with a, a gay player coming out in the AFL and that those difficulties are most likely to come from over the fence and the general community rather than from the AFL, from the club or from the teammates. And they would understand the difficulty there would be with the flag bearer of having to wear those extra pressures when all they really are asking for is acceptance to be the best footballer they can be. And they would be worried about whether that external pressure would affect their performance as a footballer. What they want to be is an outstanding footballer, an outstanding contributor to the club. So we recognised the difficulties, but I'd have to say it was one of the most amazing turnarounds I think I could say I've seen in, in my time in football is when you sit there with a playing group and you can share someone's story and say, here's a real person, there's their story, and they say, we accept that. We have no issue with that. It's now my great pleasure to welcome the Mayor of the Yarra Rangers Council, Councillor Fiona McAllister, and they're responsible for the rainbow arches at the 50 metre line. Today, and all events and conversations about homophobia, they're not about tolerance. They're not about tolerance at all. In fact, they're about intolerance. They're about us all saying that we won't tolerate homophobia, discrimination, racism. Today is about respect and equality. And that's why we are all here meeting and taking a moment to reflect on that and how important it is in our communities. It's about the culture that we have in our sporting clubs, in our workplaces, our schools, and across our communities, where we are all who we are regardless of sexuality, race, disability, and we're respected for that. We're not tolerated, but we're equal and we're respected for that. In many ways, we've come a long way. Today is proof of that. But in many ways, there is still a very long way to go. As a mayor, and I guess with my other hat on as a psychologist, working with change in organisations. I know well that awareness is simply the first step. 
acceptance and action must follow. And we can't simply assume that by raising awareness that will follow naturally. I also know there needs to be a sense of urgency. An event such as this, stands taken by people like Jason, programs such as those being led by the AFL, all create the awareness, but more importantly, the sense of urgency and reinforce the fact that we will not tolerate discrimination on any level anymore. Today is even more timely with events playing out in the, na in the national arena with regards to discrimination based on race and the conversations or the debate about the Race Discrimination Act. A reminder how important it is for all of us as individuals and communities to make our voices heard, to have events like this, to take a stand and to say we will not tolerate discrimination either against sexuality, race or on any level. Yarra Rangers Council is very proud to be supporting today, extremely proud. We've recently appointed an inclusion officer who will be working solely with sporting groups across the Shire. Support particularly around issues such as homophobia. And we also for many years have been working supporting young people dealing with their emerging sexuality and also the associated issues in terms of mental health.